CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Hawks win five to two over the Arizona Coyotes. A road win. Okay. Are you going to are you going to mute it? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> oh, hell is breaking loose. There we go. I'm hearing all right. myself. I'm We're all good. crazy. Anyway, all right. <laughs> is he just not? <laughs> yes, yes, sure I is. <laughs> Uh, Hawks win 5-2 over the Arizona Coyotes. Oh Pay no attention to what's going on we over it. here. We're fine. We're good here. It is their first it's been, road win. It's been a while since we won a road game. We in forgot how to act. 22 tries, November 9th <laughs> Off to great is their last road win. Uh, so we are here in the Victory Lounge. It is Greg Boyson's birthday. Woo! Thus the balloons. Thus us probably falling asleep halfway through the show because uh, Greg's lovely girlfriend Stacy brought us tacos oh and God. churros and cake and candy and all so and bacon from food. Charlie. Yeah. So we are beyond food. full. What beyond, a night. Beyond full. Yes. And then we got fed four power play goals. How about one that? Is that mm. even legal? Are you allowed to do that? It should be your birthday every day. It should. So it's I the agree. first time the Blackhawks have scored four power play goals in a game since December 3rd, 2022. I was going to say 19. At the Rangers, <laughs> the Blackhawks had uh, four power play goals in all of January and four in February. They had four tonight. Wonderful. That means March is off to a great start. There we go. And the good thing is we play the Coyotes again in three days or four days, whatever it is. Sunday. Sunday. Five days. Yeah. Sunday. Sunday. And I just, not to, if you missed the pregame show, one of us said the Hawks are going to win tonight. One of us is an optimist and it was me. Yeah. I will give myself the Barry Horowitz pat on the back. And uh, it's, it's, it's good. They were due. It's good to have the optimism. They, they were effing due, and uh, like I, this Blackhawks team has no right to have a get right game against anybody. Nope. But it, you know, with with the losing streaks, multiple losing streaks that they had going, with Arvid Soderblom in net on the road, in general, like this was a game that you would circle to be like, that is a great opportunity to break all those streaks and. Sure, it was four power play goals. You take advantage of the opportunities that you you earn and that are given to you. Um, and credit where credit's due, Arvid Soderblom played a great game. He was good. Yep. So good that two him. on one save was ridiculous. Huge, great save. save. And what what we've been saying about him all year is that he is, never makes the extra save to keep you know this team in a game or to put them over the top. That is one of those saves that he made tonight. That was like. If he if he had the typical solder bloom game where that goes in the back of net, it could have changed the the trajectory of the game. But he makes a save, and it makes just that little difference that they carried into the rest of the uh, rest of the game and, and are able to hold on to a get out to a lead, hold on to a lead. They played well. They took advantage of the power play. Like great. Love There's it. lots of good in this one, and we're gonna get to all of it. But we're gonna have you vote for the four star of the game as we do after every game. Lots of candidates tonight. Here are the three stars <laughs> of the game as chosen uh, presumably by the Arizona media. Nick Felino, your number three star with a goal and an assist. That's the HGO okay. bump. Hey. Holy smokes. What the fuck just <laughs> happened? <laughs> Holy Stop smokes. Stop the presses. We have a $500 super chat. This is our largest super chat yeah, in CHGO Blackhawks history uh, without question. Holy well, From, um, from ghost, someone I've never loser. seen before. Uh, says the Lord has sent me to gather the lost sheep to prepare them for the coming of the Lord. Okay. My time is near. By the way, great Hawks win. Great pass by Korchinski. Great save by Soderblom. Redemption game for Seth. The team shall have peace of mind tonight. Uh, thank you for the 500 hours. That's uh, 
And good luck with all that. <laughs> I'm confused. I, I, really, I really don't know how to react to that. But thank but, you, but that's Ghost amazing. Moser. Ghost Moser. Yeah, don't be a ghost so often. Yeah, yeah come amazing. on back anytime awesome. you want. I mean, word around the street is if you give a 500 super chat, super chat every game, the Blackhawks will win out yeah, the rest of the way. Yeah, that's true. That's what I hear. It's, I mean, they're so undefeated Christ. on nights that we get 500 dollars super chat. That's chats. true. That's right. They've never true. lost. Well, wow. we'll take it. Thanks, Ghost. We appreciate that. that. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. All See, right, number two be, star of the it game. It should be your birthday. Well, since this is my birthday, that goes directly that go, to my yeah, I think so, yeah, right? yeah. That goes to at Greg Boyson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's get serious. Four stars. Yeah. Why start now? So the third star, Nick Foligno, a goal and an assist. Tyler Johnson, bump? three assists. Arvid Soderblom, the number one star, stopping 37 of 39 saves. So here are the candidates for four star. Connor Bedard, two assists, 1943 of ice time, one shot on goal, six shot attempts. Kevin Korczynski, let's, after we get to these, let's start with him. He had an assist, one shot, four shot attempts. And Seth Jones, two goals, 2440 of ice time. I actually get a refresh that to make sure that that's accurate because that seems low <laughs> for no, Seth Jones. Accurate. Nope, that's it, correct. Yeah. Uh, 2440 of ice time, five shots on goal, and 11 shot attempts for Seth he, Jones. He is doing his darndest to uh, get more than one goal on this season. And, hey, power play goal tonight, empty Triple netter. goal total. Yeah. I, I, I love seeing that from him. Um, just just for him personally. Like, yeah. you, know, you have to know that, that that one in the goal column all season has been weighing on him. Of course. And when he had that shot at the empty net, he just said, I'm taking this. And yeah, he's right. great. Go for it. And, look, like – we got to be honest about it. He played horribly against Columbus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for the calendar year of 2024, he's been very good. Like, always getting, you know, shot leading in shots, shot yeah. attempts, yeah. obviously playing close to half the game most nights. Trying to create offense, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, whenever he has a bad game, we hear about it. I hope we hear from people about the game he had tonight because it was undeniably a really solid game for Seth Jones. So get your votes in. For the four star, but let's start with Korchinski. <coughs> that assist, great pass, was just beautiful from the right point. Just sets it right up into the slot on the tape, and the next thing you know, the puck's in the back of the net. Those are the sort of things when Jason Dickinson scoring it. As we live with the growing pains of Kevin Korchinski, you see those flashes, and that's the sort of stuff that you're looking for when you're trying to say, like, all right, is this guy really going to be what we hope and think he's going to be? Those little flashes, and they're, they're, I don't know if they've happened as often as maybe we expected them to this year. Sure. But we could probably say that about the whole team. With the offense being yeah. as poor as it's been this year, the offense hasn't been there nearly enough. But, boy, today, Korchinski, and not just the assist, that goal, the second goal that Arizona scored, the Carsoni goal, where Korchinski was in the net, and the first shot attempt, Korchinski bats it out of the air. In midair, like, nope, you're not scoring here. And then they scored on the rebound. Yeah. Uh, he played great. And he just, I think every now and again, sometimes when a young player has a couple bad games in a row, they it can reset their brain a little bit. I got to be more mistake-free. He got his ass reamed out by Kevin Dean and Luke Richardson after leaving the ice with five seconds to go. He was benched a couple games before that. Yep. Message received, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think we have to remember, like, this is a 19-year-old uh, player, 19 year old defenseman, like there are going to be a lot of uh, growing pains and opportunities to learn from mistakes. And I think, you know, every time that he's had those uh, instances, he's rebounded in, in, a, in a decent way, at least. Um, and yeah, I mean, tonight's game was was a really well played game from him. And, and I know we've been <clears throat> talking about Vlasic this year as being like the best young defenseman, but Korczynski has had, like you said, those flashes and they're at two different stages of their careers, even though they're, you know, just a few years apart in age, like, you know, playing three years in college and then for Vlasic and then basically a full season in Rockford, that's ahead of where Kevin Korczynski is in his, you know, junior and, and a, you know, professional growth experience. So, you know, Korczynski is, is, behind Vlasic in that in that way, but he's not that far behind him in what we've seen this year. Like, Vlasic has been outstanding, but Korczynski, uh, for a whole season, I think, has been pretty good for where he's at in, in his career and what the expectations should have been. This is this is one of those games where you, you kind of 
<coughs> this is this is one that he can hang his hat on for sure through the collective of the year of like that's 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 how you should play that's how you got to respond uh when you've had some bad games um and that's a building block going into this final stretch of the season into next year a couple people in the chat mentioning it too and i think that we're too as the news cycle moves on for us we're too quick to dismiss it kid lost his father this year too and yes. we don't know a ton of detail about it but it didn't seem like it was something that was very expected you know no, no. kind of out of the blue a little bit yeah. and for a 19 year old kid in his first nhl season to lose a parent that's i mean just look at the way how yeah. close Connor Bedard is with his parents. And, I mean, look, we saw for 16 years how Patrick Kane and, and his dad were inseparable. Like, that's a very strong bond. And yeah. for a kid to go well, through true. not just adjusting to life in the NHL, adjusting to living on his own full-time, you know, and and that, he's been through a ton this year. And it's yeah. I'm really glad to see him get rewarded with a solid game tonight. Yeah. And, I mean, not, not to go too far down that road, but – you know we've we've got to know Nick Felino a little bit this year. He lost his his mom very early on in his yeah. in his life and in his NHL career. So there's somebody in the locker room that can you know on that exact level kind of relate to him and and maybe give him a you know someone to to lean on in that kind of experience. But yeah, that's I mean that's completely true. That's something that you know Korchinski has also had to to go through this year um, amongst everything else going on in his career. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that that's, that's definitely a, a thing to consider for sure. Um, one thing I want to mention too, is I saw a couple of people mentioned in the chat that they don't understand how Connor Bedard is a minus two. <laughs> well, uh, four of the Hawks, five goals came in the power play. You don't plus minus. You're not a plus on the power, power play. play. So yeah, yeah. when you look at the event summary of this game, the Hawks win the game five to two and finish as a team as a minus five and the Coyotes <laughs> finish a plus five four. on five goal. All game. Uh, yeah. Not five on five, no. It was, right. it was five on six for the empty netter. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, when you're on a power play goal, you don't get a plus or a minus. <laughs> All of their goals came with a man advantage. That's funny. Yeah. Eh, whatever. Special teams, baby. Stay yeah. out of the box. It's part of the game. Well, I mean, yeah. how often do we say it, that when you have a team that doesn't have a lot of talent, that special teams can be an equalizer? Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. That was the story tonight. They were perfect on the penalty kill. They were almost perfect on the power yeah. play. And lo and behold, you That's win you the mean. effing game. That's how it I, works. I can't imagine the uh, sense of relief going on with this team uh, after tonight's game. Just to to get that kind of win, uh, you know, like to win it by a three-goal margin and to end this ridiculous road losing streak. Like there's got to be a lot of uh, weight lifted off of some of these guys' shoulders um, they get to do it to, and seems like they're going to come home in between road games yeah. between uh, tonight and Saturday night. Um, so that's good. Uh, maybe get you know, get home, sleep in your own bed, feel good about yourself uh, after a win, and then you you know you move on to the next one, and and hopefully you don't start another twenty two game losing streak. But yeah, it's that this this was so needed for this team in a season where they've endured so much losing like this this ridiculous streak on the road needed to end and especially with you know three off days ahead of them and the trade deadline yeah. looming mm -hmm. and i know it's a lot different than it was last year heading into this trade deadline i think maybe one maybe two if any guys get traded at all mm -hmm. um so it's probably a little less stress stressful than it was last year but still it's always a stressful time for guys right right there's a handful of guys in there that know they're safe Felino, dickinson Mrazek, bedard korchinski vlasic right yeah all pretty feel pretty secure hey Tyler actually, johnson you know, three assists tonight that trade value that was great. The roof. were they all on the power play power play specialist Tyler yeah. johnson yeah i, I mean, and the thing too like we can get into this maybe a little bit later in the show sure. but he's a team Tyler Johnson's the kind of guy, if I'm a contender, I'm like, hmm. It's very interesting. It's not going to cost much. No. No. Hawks what? will retain half the salary. <clears throat> and I'm sure he'd be happy to go join a cup chase, you know? Sure. Yeah. Want to go back we'll to get Tampa? To that. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, there's there's just so much to talk about. Another, and I saw Charlie the Bacon guy mention this in the chat, Anthony Beauvillier has really responded well since being taken off that top line, uh, played for the fourth line for the two games prior to this one, mm -hmm. and then was on the third line, air quotes, today. 
uh, four shots on goal in 1242. Uh, I think he's really maybe starting to find himself with this team a little bit. We saw it yeah. happen. Started the oh, he's noticeable. He's making a difference. Then he got hurt, and then he's kind of seems like he's ramping back up from injury now. And over the last two or three games, he's really been pretty solid. He's been noticeable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, getting put on that top line, um, it's there's a lot of expectation with that, uh, being with Bedard and, and Kurashev. And Richardson said that he wanted to get speed out of that trio with Beauvillier up there, and he might have got that, but that was maybe it. There's no possession. Yeah, and so now, you know, you get Beauvillier, he goes down to the fourth line, fourth, fourth line, and <laughs> plays himself out of it, which is great. Like, that's, that's how you want to see a guy respond. I think, what was it, last night he had, like, like six or seven shot attempts. Like he was very, yeah, very yeah. active in the game. Uh, and then tonight, like he again, you know, another game where you're noticeable trying to generate offense. Like for a team that is, you know, devoid of offense, that's gonna that's gonna make a difference in the game. He's either trying to get back on that counter Bedard line or he's trying to get traded. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe. <clears throat> maybe. Um, yeah, it, it's good to see that he's he's contributing a little more. Uh, making that a little more of a difference. You know, the Hawks need anybody to kind of be, you know, a little bit of a threat out there. So mm -hmm. um, it's good to see, and we'll see how that goes the rest of the year. I mean, he's playing for a contract next year. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent. So, you know, if, if, if teams looking to sign him in the summer go, well, you had a chance to be a top six guy in Chicago and you couldn't even do it. You produced nothing when you were literally the third best option on the team. We don't really have, uh, you know, much to offer you, but if he can finish just strong, you know, finish strong last 20 games of the year, put up six to eight goals, at least, you know, then his agent has a little highlight package right, yeah. to put out there and say, Hey, you know, once he got fully healthy, he could produce. Well, hey, like we talked about it yesterday. The Hawks need to bring in NHL players, right? Like, and this is a rehearsal for him to get an extension here a little bit. And he yeah. has scored 20 goals before. I don't, he's not been as impressive as I hoped he would be when they brought him in. But maybe it's a buy low and you hit on somebody like that. He's got a very high skill package. So I don't know. I, I Let's see how it finishes. That's the nice yeah. thing Kyle Davidson doesn't have to decide right now. Unless he wants to trade him, of course, but. I would give him a 20-game rehearsal, see what he got there, and if you like what he's got, bring it's him back. 20-game rehearsal for something. Yeah. If not here, 31 other teams are going to be looking. So, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I want to see more out of some of these guys where, you know, last night we were wondering after we went off the air, our guys just know that they're not going to be back on this team mm -hmm. and they're phoning it in. And it's like, maybe, but. You, you're going to want to play somewhere next year if you're not here. In North America. Yeah, unless you have your heart set on, on you know, playing in the KHL next yeah. year or the Czechia League. Avant-garde Omsk. But uh, they, you know, some of these guys got to realize that, hey, if you're not in the long-term plans here in Chicago, there's 31 other GMs watching you right now. Right, yeah. You need to play hard for something. If you're not mm -hmm. going to play hard for this team, play hard for yourself. Yeah, definitely. All right, we got some quotes rolling in uh, post game, so we're going to bring you those on the other side of a break. But first, for the first time in a long time, maybe for the first time since our friends at Coors Light have jumped on the show, we got a post game celebration going hey. on. Hey, cheers! Hey. Cheers to a Hawks win. win. Cheers to Wins a road win. Cheers to three Blackhawks being named a third star, the yeah, third three stars that? of the game. Uh, it's all this has been a long time coming, and uh, while we use Coors Light to unwind after a rough game, we use Coors Light to celebrate after a good game, and that's what we're doing today as the Hawks beat the Coyotes 5-2. to two. Uh, So whether you're stressed out, whether you're celebrating, that's why Coors Light is the beer we use to chill all the time. And chilling is good because there's a lot of – the world's on fire, if you haven't noticed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Both literally and figuratively. Could all chill out. <laughs> yeah. Chilling out is a good thing to do, and there's nothing to help you do it better than Coors Light. You know why? Because it's cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged for a smoother finish. When it's time to chill, open an ice-cold Coors Light. It's mountain cold, refreshing, crisp, and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. When it's time to chill, 
Coors Light is the beer we here at CHGO reach for. Mm -hmm. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash CHGO hockey. Punch that in. Open a new tab. Punch it in right now. Punch it in. CoorsLight.com slash CHGO hockey. Celebrate responsibly. (laughs) Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And you know, if you uh, celebrate with Coors a little too much, yes, some, some, some might spill on your floor and you might need to replace it. Yes. That's when you reach out to the good people at Empire Today because with Empire Today, you get shop at home convenience with, for the right products, for the, your needs, quick and professional installation, and their low price guarantee. Empire Today is the best place to get new flooring, so of course, they have copycats. But Empire cannot be beaten on quality, service, or speed, so, competi- so competitors advertise low-quality products that Empire simply will not carry. Empire won't promise the lowest prices because anyone who does, well, they're putting flooring in their in your home that they wouldn't put in theirs. So you know you're going to get the best quality stuff from Empire, and they make shopping for your new flooring simple and easy, and they have brought it into the 21st century with their virtual floor designer. It is a great way to see how new floors will look in any space that you're looking to get new floors in. All you got to do is take a picture of that room, and you'll be able to uh, sample virtually all the different floors uh, that you are looking to try and uh, improve your home with and uh, see what matches your wallpaper, the paper of your, or the color of your walls or your furniture, whatever it is. You can scroll through, see all the different floors, see how it looks so you can find out which one is going to be the best for you. So you can schedule a free home estimate, in-home estimate today. All listeners of uh, CHGO can receive a $350 off discount when you use the promo code CHGO. Uh, restrictions do apply. See empiretoday.com slash CHGO for details. We got a lot of new faces in here, which we see all the time after wins, and we appreciate y'all being here. Do us a favor. We're going to steal a bit from our friends at What Chaos. <laughs> We're going to have a like spike right now. Like spike. Like spike like in spike. five Four, three, two, one. Smash that like button Ooh, for us. Spiking. Let's get those likes spiked. And if we do this quickly, DJ Bean's uh, cut penis will heal. Did you hear about this? No. Yeah, what? he cut his penis. <laughs> <laughs> you got to listen to I'm Friday sorry. What? Yeah, he, he, had to, he went to urgent care because he cut his penis. <laughs> Doing what? <laughs> Don't answer that. I'm not. You got to find out. And then was they it took, on, what, was is it on the song, t- what is the song where it goes, cut my life into the pieces. Papa Roach, yeah. Papa, they really edited right. it to say, cut penis or cut yeah. my penis. It's awesome. They were playing it all day. <laughs> so go and listen to the What Chaos well, I podcast. know what I'm listening to on the, on the way. Was <laughs> that today's today? show? Over the la- well, today they talked about it again. I think it came up for the first oh, time on no. yesterday's show. Oh, uh, the other thing you're doing, our friends at What Chaos, go give them a subscribe when yes, we're done please. here. They're 250 away. They, really? Yes. Nice. They went to the Bruins Oilers game today and get, and went low to a singles. And if people showed them they were subscribed on their phone, they would give them a dollar. Mm-hmm. So if they get to 7,000 YouTube subscribers, they're going to be live for 24 hours. Was it 7,000? 4,000. Oh, 4,000. 4, yeah. Okay, that's a lot closer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, 4,000 followers. And last I saw, they were 250 away. Yeah, so if you don't know about the What Chaos podcast, it is the all-city national hockey mm-hmm. show. Very funny. Slash, slash Bruins podcast. Slash Bruins podcast. <laughs> slash Oilers podcast. Yeah. Slash Penile Injury podcast. Uh, give them a listen. Go subscribe to the <laughs> What really Chaos show. Cornering the market. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Wait, man. We're just giving you the idea so. of what you're in for on What Chaos. So, so, if, if you, you love hockey and grab ass. If you like <laughs> Boston Bruins and penis injuries, <laughs> boy, do we have the show for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I'm not going to. You, 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 can, you can hear. Pete and DJ are, are, are great. It came up today during They're the awesome. Manscaped read. Oh, of course. So I don't well, know if that's if he if if you cut yourself, you were not using Manscaped or not using it properly. Right. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm so glad we don't have to do those reads anymore. I think they're back. We don't. They're uh, they're back with the Bulls, I believe. Them. That's yeah. Peck, that's Peck's department. Hey, no. <laughs> <laughs> I I said that on purpose. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. Some quotes rolling in here post game. Love this one. This is from Ben Pope. Connor Bedard, quote, oh, my God, that was a long time. 
obviously you try not to think about it much, but that was pretty <laughs> crazy stretch there. It's nice that it's over. It'll be the first happy plane ride we've had in a little bit. <laughs> and then we've got one from Arvid Soderbloom who says, I feel like I've been close a couple times, but we fucked it up. So it's nice to get it all the <laughs> way this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, there you are. Uh, this is my second stuff. language, not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That a boy. So you could just, I mean, even just from the quotes yeah. rolling in, you could tell these guys are like, thank God. They needed well, this. They, they're tired. They're tired of losing. Mm-hmm. And then they're tired of us, as us, not just Media. the three of us, but the, the beat as a whole walking in going, so losing sucks, <laughs> right? Because what we don't know what to yeah. ask them anymore because they've literally been losing the same game over and over mm. and over again. They're not even losing in different ways. They're literally losing the same way every night. Yes. Mm. They're tired of us asking <laughs> it. They're tired of losing. So good for them. The only, especially on the road, the win one yeah. on the road, win one for Arvid. You know, we, we've criticized him a lot this year. Yeah. And justifiably so. In the last Hawks, some, I, some, I said he wasn't an NHL goalie. Some people say we pick on him too much. No, we just report facts. Like, tonight was good. Like, tonight mm-hmm. was yeah. was good. The rebound control was a lot better. Was he it, was 37 saves? Yeah. 37. Yeah. The, the, In a he row. Was se- <laughs> <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Uh, <laughs> In a row? <laughs> At least you're not 38. Anyway, they have, um, you know, his rebound controls, but he was seeing the puck better. Mm-hmm. Probably had something to do with playing in, you know, a practice rink. Not so many people to distract <laughs> you there. Uh, but, hey, congratulations on that uh, million-dollar gate tonight, Coyotes. You earned it. You guys it. did it. Good you're job. welcome, all the Blackhawk fans spending their money in your baby rink. Uh, another quote here from Seth Jones. I, I like this is very hockey-ish. Did he drop an F-bomb too? He did not. Oh, sorry. Uh, on, he says, the Coyotes weren't pressuring very much, so even on the draws, I was just walking across and trying to get something through. They weren't pushing nearly as hard as Colorado was, and then the puck movement, we weren't stick-handling and passing, stick-handle pass. It was bang, 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 one touching to each other, and that's when it ends up in the back of the net. That's... Uh. Thank you. That's, that's oh hockey. God. That's oh hockey lingo for those. Th- that he's just sugarcoating, basically saying, "Yeah, those guys over there, they're really bad at hockey." But also, his they made point, it easy for us. Tonight. His point of just stop dicking around with the puck yeah. and get it on net. Mm-hmm. Well, he it helps when apparently the other team doesn't pressure you at all. No, that makes it easier. Like they just sure. stand there and let you do it. Sure. Oh, and the Sharks are beating the uh, Stars 5-3 right now. That's unbelievable. Joe Pavelski has three shots. First 10 of cancer. Locker room cancer confirmed. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, exactly. Dude, I, thought, I was like, man, that's bad news. <laughs> <I know. laughs> they just traded for him, too. <laughs> wow. Locker room, locker room To be clear, he's a locker room the Flames, not actual the Flames cancer. probably knew that. Here's the funny thing. Not only are the Sharks winning 5-3 uh, in the second period, uh, they are being outshot 25-14, and they're of winning 5-3. to three. Ah, but the quality of shots, my friend, <laughs> or something. Who's in net for the I'm stars? Guessing is it Ottinger? I think it's I'm Ottinger. guessing it's their backup. Oof. It is Jake Ottinger. Oh, boy. That's not good. Woof. They woof, should woof, trade woof. him to the Hawks. That's not good. Yeah, well, hey, we need the Sharks. Ottinger. Oh, we, sorry. We, that's a low we need the shark, Sharks to win. We do. If we want so to they s- can keep pace with us exactly. in our winning ways. And the uh, Sharks will be here on uh, not Sunday. week from Sunday. Week from Sunday. St. Patrick's yeah. Day. Yes. Yes. The, the, t- the afternoon tailgate day. Yes. That's, 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 that's hey, going to be fun. <laughs> if, you're, if you are willfully paying money to watch the Blackhawks and Sharks w- play hockey in person, you should be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be drunk to watch that. <laughs> and so, when we get drunk watching hockey, we do it with a nice cold Coors Light. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, oh boy. Refreshing. Yeah. It's, Who else I, do we like today? There's so many good Hawks. So many guys. So many. Nick Felino, CHGO Bump, continues yep. to to boost his career. Yep. So uh, credit to us for, for <laughs> reviving for re- him. Resurrecting his career. Yeah. He's You're got he's got to be up to, I mean, his a, a, uh, not a career high, but a, a, a total points has got to be up there for the last couple I of years for him. I was looking at this the other day. He is now up to, what, uh, 15 goals in... 29 points. 29 points. Is that what he had coming into tonight? No. No, yeah, that, count, that right. counts tonight. That counts tonight. He had tonight. 26 points with the Bruins last year in 60 games. Um, he had 73 points 
in 79 games in 2014-15. Well, he was he an all-star chance. that year. Uh, this is his highest had, yeah. point total since the 2019-2020 season right. in Columbus where he had 31. He's on pace to surpass he that. He hasn't had a 40-point season since 2016-17. So yeah. that's within reach. 11 points in 19 games. He can do it. Two more. As long as he keeps wearing that CHGO hoodie, yeah. it's in the bag. Yeah. Three three more goals and uh, six more points, seven more points, will surpass uh, every season except that 16-17 season for his highest since then. So that's pretty good. And, I mean, look, that's uh, part of that is playing an elevated role. Uh, you know, he was playing down the lineup in uh, – Boston and uh, was playing, I think, a little bit more down the lineup in Columbus in those last few years. He's played mostly top six uh, since he's been here. Yeah, bless you. And since he, uh, you know, hopped on the ride with us here at CHGO, I think he's flirting with close to a point per game, getting close yeah, to Yeah, he's it. averaging 17.47 a game with the Hawks. Last year with Boston, 12.22. Yeah, it's a big difference. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Braggs, one of your peoples was in the chat. Someone just came in and just said Caleb Williams. That's that's. I think you're testing if that's one of that's one of your guys. Tell tell him. <laughs> Come on, Zachary. Just, just Should show, we do a breaking news show? Just show the up and chat say said Williams. Cha- you're, you're, Caleb Williams. You're uh, you're you're uh, twelve hours and thirty nine minutes too early for that. <laughs> <laughs> twelve o'clock. Braggs will be on this side yeah. of the camera, and you can there, say Caleb Williams. Show at noon tomorrow. You know, honestly, we haven't talked enough about him. I, I, and I, and the first time I've heard guy, his name, in, I think in, Zachary really touched on something. I, he might be onto that something hasn't been touched on yet. Yeah, this the, the Blackhawks Bears- Black should draft him number one overall. I agree. Yeah, for yeah. sure. He's got good size. It's gonna be cool though. You're gonna get Bedard and uh, Caleb Williams back to back. Well, imagine if the Bears had used and the Mac, first overall and Mac pick last year. Celebrini at two. Yep. Has that ever happened? Where a football team and a hockey team back to back years on the same years number one overall pick, especially when there is high, like the level of number one picks they are too. Yeah. I mean, I I think we looked nobody at, tanks better than Chicago. We, we looked baby. it up. Woo-hoo! We looked We're it up. Doing it when, right. When the Bears and, and Blackhawks got the first overall pick, it, it had been many, many years since two teams had the number one overall pick in most, I think, any of the major sports in the same year. Yeah. Like, it's, it's extremely rare. So I would imagine Getting ca- in back-to-back Bedard years, and, and it might be Williams the only time it's ever happened. Back, yeah. You'd have half the, you know, if it was some of your Bears fans in this chat last year, they'd be telling you to trade the pick back last year for a haul instead of drafting Connor Bedard. No, nobody no, would have no, said no, that. no, no one, no one <laughs> thought that. Nobody in their right mind would have said that. No if one anybody thought came that in here and said all. that, we would have immediately banned them and sent the police <laughs> to their house. They would have yeah. been shunned. Yeah. Um, it's smart, crazy. Yeah. Smart yeah. chat. I it's re- it's I like uh, Kevin uh, put up a video yesterday. Kevin Kadek put up a video on YouTube yesterday. If you want to s- check it out, go to CHGO YouTube page. And he mentioned like how we've had this success for our two years here, despite basically every team sucking. Yeah. Aside from the Cubs who were like, oh, we almost made the playoffs. Yay. Yeah, but even that wasn't fun. Right. Yeah. Right. It was misery most of the right. season. Because they, they got your hopes up and then found the perfect way to kick you in the nuts right that last two weeks of the season mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. if you get you know bedard develops the way he's developing already some of these hawks prospects hit caleb williams is 80 percent of what people think he could be <laughs> the savior he's already the best quarterback in bears history just <laughs> based on 80 percent of projections like and they're already what seven win team last year i think like it's gonna get really fun around here really quick yeah i mean i don't know but i here, winning makes things more fun. We've yet to Usually. really experience hey, that yeah. here. Hey, don't get greedy over here. You guys win one game, and now all of a sudden you're talking about enjoying your life covering sports. Right, you know how long it's, it's been relaxed. since we've won a game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, Valentine's but Day. Look, all I know is, all I know is, the Bears or the Blackhawks got two wins before the Bears this year, and our season started a month later than yours. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, but I mean, no, it's it's the two teams that have direction in town right now are the Hawks and Bears like there's a clear there's a clear modus of operation that they're going under and they're sticking with it and they're being consistent with it and it's good and all right let's save this for the Bears show yeah I'm just saying it's (laughs) it's exciting times and it's not just ties together it's not just about tonight no No, absolutely but it's it's about just in general the 
the way that the two franchises seem to be heading because of the arrivals of two generational talents. Well, and today is the two year anniversary of Hop on the Ride. Yeah. So, yeah. And you can hop on the ride on the CTA and you can get our uh, CTA themed CHGO shirt from the CHGO collection. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's chgolocker.com. There are so many awesome new designs. Uh, I ordered three yesterday. I know, Braggs, you ordered what? Like every one of them? I went off. Yeah. You, you, had, <laughs> a, you had a day. You had a day. Um, That's so why you're producing our show to make back the money you spent <laughs> yeah. on shirts. <laughs> Picked up some extra shift. Shirt budget. Producing it so I don't have to go home and have my wife yell at me for ordering. No, no, no. I was going to say, don't worry. I did a three hour Purdue post game show and I got super chats. It's paid for. We're all yeah, good. Right. There you go. Um, but go to chgolocker.com to stock up on the Chicago collection and all the great stuff we offer at chgo locker. And if you've been waiting to become a diehard, all chgo.com is the place to do it. Uh, you'll get a free shirt. When you sign up, including one of our new designs, or if you choose one of the hoodies, you'll get $35 off access to all of our great uh, takeovers and watch parties and Discord and all of our great written content, like the Rebuild Report, which is coming tomorrow-ish. Yeah, why not? Sure. That was Wednesday. Blackhawks yeah. Beat coming Thursday. Sure. Lots right. of good stuff on the way, so become a diehard today. Yeah. I have to look for that in the late afternoon. <laughs> yes. All chgo. So long, so long as my daughter, so long as my daughter uh, goes to school tomorrow, it'll get done. Yeah, there you go. Um, Stop so, throwing up on yeah. me. And uh, while we're while we're telling people about stuff, how was your uh, charcuterie plate today, Greg? Well, we all enjoyed it. Uh, surprise today with a nice uh, birthday taco bar mm -hmm. and uh, bacon board from our guy Charlie. Look oh. at that thing. We had uh, four Warriors. types of bacon on there. The uh, shawarma bacon, which is one of my favorites. Shawarma. Buffalo bacon. Buffalo. The candied bacon. Candy. And the amazing chocolate-covered bacon. Holy smokes, was that so good. So good. Plus, there's some uh, of his awesome bacon jams there. And a uh, homemade uh, goat cheese with uh, jardinera. Jardinera goat cheese. Woo. Yeah, you could see that log in the middle. That was inspired. You know. <laughs> <sighs> Yes. Anyway, uh, thank you, Charlie, for chipping in on an awesome birthday night. And if you want to make any day, not just your birthday, but any day awesome, all you got to do is have some bacon from Charlie the Bacon Guy based out of Woodridge, Illinois. And he's making craft bacon and bacon jams in over 35 different flavors. Naturally curated, preservative-free products. There aren't any ingredients that Charlie can't pronounce himself involved in the process, unlike most of those store-bought inferior bacons. Um, there he gives some examples, but I'm not reading those words because I don't know what they mean. Um, <laughs> vacuum sealed and freezes perfectly. Bless you, Braggs. B bacon lasts in the package up to 60 days in the fridge, one week after the seal is broken, and nine months in the freezer. But nobody is keeping bacon around that long. Bacon jam lasts about 90 days in the fridge or up to one year in the freezer. But if you're keeping bacon in the freezer that long, you're doing it wrong. I agree completely. The bacon jam goes perfect on anything. Put it on your scrambled eggs, toast, Crackers, burgers, I've put it into grilled cheese. It's sure. awesome. Charcuterie boards. We just yeah. showed you the picture. Cinnamon mm -hmm. rolls. Yep. Mm, pizza or Charlie's favorite, the spoon. What's your favorite bacon jam use? It doesn't matter. As long as it's getting in your mouth in some sort of vehicle, you're in a good spot. <clears throat> hey, now. Yes. All the flavor. You can check out the Bacon Vault on his awesome website. All the flavors he's made in the past. It's not currently, if it's not currently available, give Charlie about two weeks and he'll make it for you. He's also got awesome merch, beanies, hats, t-shirts, stickers, and coffee mugs. Check mm -hmm. out the maple pepper, chorizo, French toast, honey chipotle, Cajun, jardinera, raspberry chipotle, the Maui Wowie. Those are just, just a few of the great bacon flavors. Bacon jam comes in original bourbon, the mango habanero, the cherry jalapeno. We had those tonight. Mm -hmm. They are fantastic. Fantastic. Starting now, you can save 10% on your order at charliethebaconguy.com when you use the promo code CHGO at checkout. You can pick it up, which is the most efficient way for, for you, or he can deliver it to you, meet you halfway, or even ship it. He makes the bacon so you can bring it home. That's charliethebaconguy.com. Buy all your bacon from Charlie, please. Do that. Uh, our friend in the chat here, Banjo Playing Bison, nice. asks, uh, do they have Canadian bacon for hockey? No, but they have the maple pepper. No. Charlie, if you listen to the latest Time Fab podcast, and you should, he is Never starting on Canadian bacon. Oh, well, F me then. Yep. Do you know what they call Canadian bacon in Canada? Bacon. Bacon. 
back bacon. Back bacon is delicious. Well, bacon comes from the back. I'm just telling you what they call it. And baby got back, as we know. Bacon got back. It does. All right, this is our last show before the trade deadline. Yes. And we got to it a little bit, but why don't we give our thoughts heading into it right now, talk about a little bit what we expect could happen, maybe some unexpected things. Um, I think there's no mystery that the two big names that we expect could be moved, big Tyler Johnson, <laughs> Colin Blackwell. Those seem yeah. to be the two that would have some value that other teams would really <clears throat> desire. Yeah. Yeah, the the arrows point to those guys. Some value, expiring deals. They have their own equipment. Um, you know, they check the boxes. Yeah, and yeah, place this. You just can't get that yeah, off the street. You just can't just get that from anywhere. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, those guys feel like the kind of deals that I, we said on the, on, on the pregame show, and I think we might have said last night too, Um you know, those are those are guys that it's kind of like, well, we missed out on, you know, top target A, B, and C. So let's let's say we get Colin Blackwell to fill that role or Tyler Johnson. Like those are those are the kind of guys that like at one fifty nine PM right. those deals are going through the fax machine. Like, oh yeah, by the way, this guy got we missed traded out too. on our top seven guys, so let's yeah. go get Tyler Johnson. And which which is fine. I I I think if if there is uh, value uh, teams offering something of value to the Blackhawks for those guys. I think it's fine to do it. I don't think you're going to get much more than maybe a fourth round pick. Um, I think the 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 biggest thing that the Blackhawks have coming up to Friday's deadline that they can utilize is their cap space. Like you might you might get more out of a cap space deal where you're either bringing in a bad contract or you're, for, or you're helping facilitate in a three team trade, you might get more from that than you do in a one for one or whatever it is with a Blackwell or a Tyler Johnson trade. Yeah. I think realistically Tyler Johnson can get you like a fourth round pick, maybe third, maybe you get one of those conditionals. Yeah. It's a third round pick. If they, pick. Get, to the cup final if they get to the conference final and Johnson plays in 15 games or something, it goes up to a, second or third uh it's the salary cap retention that's going to get the extra yeah. i mean if anthony mantha can get a second and a fourth round pick from vegas you should get a third you should get a third for tyler johnson yeah. blackwell you know blackwell probably a, a fifth rounder maybe yeah see I, I think if i don't know i think if it's a fifth rounder for blackwell i just keep them well I, and i wonder what their desires are too yeah like they might say like hey i i kind of want a chance at playing some meaningful games here rather than sticking around. And if that's the case, then yeah, I mean, if, if, if a team is going to offer you something for that, I feel like Kyle Davids is the kind of GM that'll help oblige those guys and in, in those, in those uh, desires. If that happens to be the case, if they, if, if, you know, trade deadline comes and goes and, you know, Colin Blackwell <laughs> is in the lineup Saturday night. Fine. No, yeah. It's Give not him an gonna, extension, yeah. like keep him around. If you, if, if he's here after Friday, Keep him around because he's he's the kind of guy that I think in the locker room and on the ice, as we talk about this clearly defined two year gap between now and when things are being set up for the new era to like fully be here and like that next step of the rebuild to be like quote unquote done. Um, Blackwell fits that that mold. Yeah, I mean. I, I I have no issue if you don't trade them. I have no issues if you bring them back. I know, as we discussed last night about needing to get some more NA, NHL talent, you know, and if they do go out and bring in, you know, say two established veteran free agents, and you do have Taylor Hall ready for day one, and Anthony CU's back, and hopefully Reichel's back, and then maybe Macklin Celebrini or – and then maybe a Colton Dock. Like, do you have room for Colin Blackwell? Maybe. I mean, if, if he gets pushed out because you just yeah. have too much NHL People talent, always get hurt. that's not a bad thing. Yeah. I think I think there's some guys that are on expiring deals that they could move on from that if Blackwell was uh, was still around, he'd still be in, in, in the lineup for sure. Yeah. I mean, he's got the speed, which puts him ahead of a lot of the other guys. Mm -hmm. I mean that's why he's in the lineup every night. Yeah, the, and other guys are shuffled. His in his his speed, his his tenacity, and 
he always seems to be one of the guys that like plays the way that Rich when when Richardson is really hammering home the like we need you to play simple, finish checks, play north and south. Like that is what Dick uh, Blackwell does best. So, you know that that gets rewarded with this team. And remember last year too that we were expecting, even though the Hawks did make a lot of moves, we were expecting a lot more. But Kyle Davidson had sort of set his price of saying. Like for Athens to see you, I'm not just going to trade him for nothing. Right. So he kept him around and then ended up resigning him. Like there's and there are a couple of other examples of that last year too. And I think he's probably got a price in his head for Blackwell saying, look, as a fifth round pick, good enough for me to move on from this guy who has really been kind of a heart and soul guy since he's come back. He's been an effective player. Yeah. Like let's be honest, like he's added a little more than we all expected him to. Um, the guy he's been since he's come back from injury is what we kind of expected for him to be since jump last year. And it really took all of last year and the injury this year for him to come back and really be the guy that we were sort of promised. So mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it's it's an interesting, I think what he says is you want Colin Blackwell. I'm picking up. I'll answer the call, but I've got a number. I got something in my head. And if you don't hit it, I, I'm not, well, I'm in is, no, I'm under no pressure to move it. This is a good year to be a seller because <laughs> there's not a lot of teams selling out there. Yeah. There really isn't. I mean, there's some teams out there that you, like, do you think the Philadelphia Flyers thought they wouldn't be sellers at this point of the year? I don't think le- legitimately, yeah, they could say, yeah, we, I mean, they're in a playoff spot right now. Yeah. When I saw Barry Trotz is talking about buying. Like, they're not trading Soros, and he was saying today, like, well, the asking price is really high for Well, yeah, because there's, fi- there's five teams looking to trade Yeah, right like, now. yeah. I, I don't, I don't know, know. man. If the, if the Predators, I don't know. Whatever. We could have a whole show. That's on. a whole show. Yeah. Like you don't. I mean, I know you're in a playoff spot right now, but who are you beating in there? Who are you beating this year in the in the Western Conference? Nobody. No. Nobody. If the playoffs started today, they'd line up against the Avs. Was yeah. it? Yeah. Congrats for your for four games. Who, who they'd be playing? Who's ever in first place of the Central? Yeah. Stars, Jets, Avs. Doesn't matter which one. Yeah. Jets currently. Oh, Jets and and Predators would be such a boring series. Yuck. Well, come on, Avs, win that division. <laughs> so you can yeah. smoke the Predators and Juicy <laughs> Sorrows out in four games. Yeah, I, it's – it's uh, so aside from those two, we talked a lot about Johnson and Blackwell. Anything that you guys think could be, like, maybe a surprise uh, player that could drum up some interest? And we talked about him a little bit earlier, and I asked you guys during the game, maybe they don't love what they've seen from Beauvillier, and maybe they've been willing to trade him. I just don't, I don't think there's a huge market out there for him. Yeah. But that's what you're saying, though. If there's so few sellers and so many buyers, teams are going to be. Yeah, these GMs feel pressure. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. As the deadline approaches and they, oh, God, we struck out on that and that and that. And they, right or wrong, they feel that pressure to do something. I've got to do something. And they get desperate and they and they try to make something happen. So I'm just trying to yeah. think of, you know, some some guys that might be, a little bit of surprised uh, surprises if they were to move, but could could possibly happen. I'd be surprised if Beauvillier is moved just because. I think if you're if you're one of these guys, and I see a lot of people throwing Taylor Radish out there in the chat. I think that's just wishful thinking that people want to get rid of Taylor. Yeah, he's Radish. got no lower value yeah. than he's ever yeah, had. Yeah, right I, I think there's nobody's calling. For if Taylor there's Radish. guys like Beauvillier and Radish who aren't putting up numbers on this Blackhawks team. I can't see anybody around the NHL being like, that's a guy I got to get on my team. Like, even in a market that might be thin on options, I think if you're if you're going down the line of who's available and you get down to the Blackhawks, I mean, I, I don't know how desperate you're going to get. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people calling about anybody besides Johnson, um, Tyler Johnson, or Colin Blackwell. I know Elliot Freeman had said that, there was some interest in Connor Murphy, but his injury status basically takes yeah. that all that off the table. Um, so yeah, I just I don't think it's going to be a, a super busy uh, deadline for the Blackhawks. And I guess if if if, I'm, if I if I have to say who would be a surprising, but like actually like a legitimate target, like yeah, I guess <coughs> Beauvillier would make some sense. That's really the only guy I could see. Nobody's going to call you for for. Radish. No one's calling you for Boris Kachuk. What about one of these, well, like an RFA defenseman? Like teams know the reality of the Hawks system. They know they've got some guys coming up. Do you think there'd be any interest in 
like Isaac Phillips? I don't know. Like if a team for says an NHL like, team, I probably not. No, not at the deadline. No one's no one who's looking to make a playoff run here going to say, well. Boy, that Isaac Phillips, he can't even play. He can't even beat sure. out Jacob Megna or Jared Tenorti, so we got to trade yeah. for him. Yeah, I don't see that. I don't know. Maybe in the offseason, but not at the deadline. Yeah, if 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 it, if you get to the summer, if you get to the draft and the Blackhawks are saying, like, you know, hey, these guys are, are available, uh, you know, to move their RFA deals or whatever, yeah, then maybe there might be some interest. Michael Evans says Donato could be a surprise guy. Does he have another year? Uh, I yes. it was one year. Donato has another year next year at yes. two million, yeah. which is it's not a fine. big deal. That's, fine, yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> that fine. would fall. That would be the surprise guy. Yeah, I would think so. And I think I that think would be a guy that, you know, maybe th- next deadline. This time next year will definitely be on the radar because yeah. he's a guy that can. Uh, he's a lot like Tyler Johnson. Yeah, he's a guy that is versatile, plays up and down the lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, has that. He's he's built for playoff hockey. He plays playoff yeah. style hockey, so I could see that uh, next year. Uh, I know the the, the the Shawnee keeps saying, you know, uh, talking about the Ice Hogs. Maybe they make a, an AHL level deal, get some reinforcements for the Ice Hogs. Maybe. Um, and he mentioned the guys that they're missing. Um, they're probably hoping that those are the those guys they get back soon, and that's yeah. going to be kind of like you know you get Bjork back here in another two three weeks, Gust back. Hardman. Uh, Hardman just went on. You get those three guys back before the playoffs, and you're winning well, without them right they're now. They're going to get Zach Sanford back, too, because Anthony C.U. is coming back. As, yeah, as soon as Anthony C.U. is back, Sanford's yeah. going down. So that would be, be a big body down there. Man, Rem Pitlick's been Rem up the Rem AHL. Pitlick is an AHL. He's a great AHL no, he's player. Been, yeah. He's been tremendous for them. And we said before, uh, a couple of shows ago, wouldn't be surprised if, if Reichel is uh, – Still in Rockford, come and go, go of trade line trade deadline will day be, because they don't play till Saturday, right? Because then he'll be eligible to play for right. them into the postseason, which I I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. And you're probably adding, maybe probably Landon Slager, uh, at maybe. once once the NCAA season's over for him, um, and maybe a guy like uh, Paul Ludwinski. Or Gavin Hayes, when their OHL seasons are over, they're already signed to their ELCs. Yeah, they would have the ability to go to the AHL once their OHL seasons were over, if they if that happened to line up. So maybe they're not that desperate to make an AHL trade, a la 2018's, you know, sending Vili Poca for Christy Domenico and bringing back Adam DeClendenning and loading up with right. AHL veterans to help a team like that go into their playoff push. Um, yeah, I think they might be in a in a spot where their own players in their own system might be enough to, you know, give them a little right. bit of a jump. And I know the playoffs are are very important for the Ice Hogs, but I mean, you do have a you do have quite a few young guys that are the organization is hoping are going to be important pieces at the NHL level. And do you want to get a veteran or two in down there to help the AHL team at the cost of their playing time? Probably not. No. So we'll see. I mean, they may. They, you, you never know. Uh, Mark Bernard is a crafty vet GM. He may pull off a, an AHL deal, but uh, I mean, they they do have a few players in the lineup right now, and I th- I know it's because injury impacts them. But the Ice Hogs do have a couple players in their lineup right now that are like AHL contract guys. Yeah. Where if you brought in a more AHL veteran, that's a producer as well. Right. That's you can kind of you know, down the line, add add a guy in there and not take away from the young players ice time. The other possibility too is your uh, Nikita Zaitsev style move, where a team needs to move on a salary or they need someone to take on some bad contract to accommodate a trade. They get involved in a three way trade. Those are impossible to predict because you don't know right who's trading for what elsewhere and who wants to move what. Um, but that's something that I think is certainly in the cards. I would probably say as likely as a player moving would be the Hawks helping some other team move a contract or accommodate yeah. a trade in some way, shape, or form. So in either getting picks back or, you know, players with undesirable expiring contracts next year, like we said, they need NHL players. And look, when we he was a punching bag for us for a long time, 
But when Nikita Zaitsev was healthy this year, he was effective. Yeah. He wasn't great. Mm-hmm. He wasn't flashy, but he can go out there and give you 13, was, 14 solid minutes. He wasn't minutes. the worst defenseman this team has uh, iced this year. No, that's no. for sure. If he was in the lineup now, he'd be the fourth best defenseman? Third best uh, defenseman? Yeah. Yeah, on most nights. Yeah. So, all right. All right, let's wrap up our that segments our, and then our wrap our up Ice the Hogs show. chat for the day. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, trade deadline Friday again. If you missed the pregame show, we're going to be on Friday at 1.30. Yeah, the deadline, deadline happens at two. at 2. So we'll be on at 1.30 and we'll be there as the deadline expires and hopefully some moves will trickle in as we're on the air. So, yes, uh, And as I said on the pregame show, we are off tomorrow and Thursday. Thursday yep. So please, Kyle, <laughs> no uh, Mr. Davidson, no trades. Uh, until hold, hold off until Friday. Friday, one thirty eight, one thirty nine ish p.m. Yeah. is it going okay to to fire off that Tyler Johnson trade? Yes, please wait until Friday. Thank you very much. All right, well, what do we want to do first, Braggs? We want to name the four star. We want to go to Connor's corner. What do you got ready for us? Whatever's clever. I'm I'm down with. All right, let's uh, do little... uh, let's do the four star of the game. All right, you got it. And yeah. uh, right, deservedly I, so. Hold on, I got to get the drum roll. I mean, if I don't get the drum roll, what are we doing here? That's a good point. Go ahead. That's a good point by you. There the four star of the game <laughs> is with two goals, Seth Jones, 2440 of ice time. Skating into your screen. Five shots on goal, 11 <laughs> shot attempts. That's what it took for Seth Jones to finally win four star of the game. What a difference hey, a week job. makes. Yeah. A week ago, they were, were, were running them out of town. Pitchforks. Pitchforks and torches, and now we love them again. And look, I mean, uh, we get told that we are too, that we defend him too much. I think that what we are doing is analyzing the games as they happen. There's good games, there's bad games, there's been That's a lot more uh, good partner. than bad. So when he's bad, we'll tell you. When he's good, we'll tell you. He was very good tonight. Uh, who's your hawk? Also, Seth Jones won by me. Us, us, the faction of Zawaski and Bedard and uh, and uh, Boyce and damn, wish it was Bedard. Sorry, Greg. <laughs> me too. Um, I have. I our, wish I was counting. So now Bedard. Greg and I lead thirty nine to twenty four <laughs> over the Mega Mario. Powers. Mm-hmm. So we are rolling. We are we are on a we're on a hot roll right now. We're the demolition of uh... you. You loser, Mario. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with you, Mario? You know, I pick Bedard, and he gets two assists and still loses. So I know. We have Crazy. to have a, a you know? closed door meeting with him and figure out what's going on. Should have shot more. And uh, then yeah. finally, we will go into Connor's Corner for a joyous celebration. Do, we get do, speaking of music. Do, we need the Connor's Corner do, music. Yes. We can't do, live do, without do, the do, Connor's do, Corner do, music. Do. There, that beautiful. Love. Connor Bedard ended the game with two assists, one shot on goal. Six shot attempts and 19 to 43 of ice time. So a uh, good game for number 98, getting back on the score sheet, making things happen. Uh, took another sh- hit today. Yeah. Sounded like I said shit. He took another hit today. Hit. Matt Dumbo with a late hit. Apparently unseen again by his Blackhawks teammates. I mean, if yeah. we're going to get in the fights every time someone gives a little extra to our yeah, star player. Look- we're gonna get into a lot of fights. Yeah, but give yeah, give, but give Matt Dumbo a little something, something. Yeah, but you you do it once or twice, and this is old school hockey brain. You do it once or twice, and guys will start thinking twice about having to take a run at Bedard, finishing a check maybe a little late, a little extra hard. They'd be like, ah, shit! Now Jared Tenorti's fist is gonna be in my face. If I it don't, stops I don't one, it works. That. Yeah, so because it could be the one that breaks his jaw or yeah, separates his shoulder I, or whatever. I would. I would yeah, like just toughen him up. I would like for Bedard to stop taking these kinds of hits. Oh um, and if that's Nick, a joke, and if Nick Felino needs to, uh, <laughs> guys, in your inside jokes. No, it's like, not. I, don't I, like I a, just saw something. No, no, I thought he was reacting to that. And Lynn, he, no, that's what I said. That's this not, is that's the not, new. No, we are we are adjusting the jar now. If anyone says trade for Matt Rempe. It is another $500 yes. super chat. Yeah. Or we will or, invoice you. Or the Wi Fi guy from Montreal. Yeah. Oh, no, Yuri Jacques. Uh, Jacques. I like him, but Jesus. Like, or yeah, no, no, Payne not, calls him Jack no. off. He's not to Rob no, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's no good defensively. No. That's why he spent half the year in the AHL. Here's no. the thing when, I, you're a folk, would, when someone's a folk hero, it usually means they're not very good. Yeah, I would much rather have a player <laughs> who can produce points, score goals, uh, and also feed fists. Then uh, only does the latter. 
No. Like Yeah, I don't want any punch monkeys on this team. Yeah, no. We don't we don't need to do that. But to my point, I would <sighs> like for Connor Bedard to stop taking these kinds of hits. And I think if we had a little <laughs> bit of a response from somebody in this style, and I know we 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 are all in the boat of like fights after clean hits are dumb, but especially this week with the Manson slash and 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 the hit tonight. Like I'm just like I'm kind of sick of seeing Bedard get like these kinds of like cheapy hits, and no one has to answer for it. So I don't know. I we'll see if if it happens again. What if, if there's any response or not? Um, yeah, we'll we'll see what what uh, what happens. I like the Giggity's train of thought. Trade for Kachuk. Any sure. of them. Either of them. I'll take Keith sure. at this point. Yeah. yeah no, you wouldn't. <laughs> uh, he's my size these days. I'll take him. I'll take him to sit. Add to this show. Yeah, sure. But not my hockey team. And Go says uh, they can only send 500 hours a day. YouTube is lame. That's all right. We'll put our Venmo out for you. You can just send it there. We, I promise we, we'll we, super chat about it. If we can stay on the, the air company. for another nine minutes, it'll be another day. That's true. <laughs> there you go. That's true. Um, yeah, but like the Matt Rempe thing, uh, no. 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 I don't, no, I don't no. want somebody like that. No. I've, I'm starting to feel bad for that kid. Like, it's this is not going to end well. You know... Yeah. You know who what he is? Have you ever heard the uh have you ever heard Hit Somebody by Warren Zevon? Yes. He is that guy from that song personified. We're basically yeah. just like you're there to punch people. We Hit don't somebody. care what you do. Hit somebody. Yeah. Yeah. The hockey song. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, guys that are sh- strictly fighters uh are a dying breed in the NHL and literally like a a 21 year old who's fighting what what is this six times in eight games or something like that you see his face is all busted up like yeah, he's n- fighting Ryan Reeves he's got two black his, eyes already. his nose is is as twice as wide as it should be he's got two black eyes and he's fighting Ryan Reeves like sure his the brain's the, not even fully developed no yet, and, and it's yeah it's not good and he, the, and he the, it was almost like he had to fight Reeves. Yeah. Reeves was chasing him the whole game. Well, and it was it was it was talk, it was talked about so much leading up to it because of his previous fights and that's like, "Oh, here comes Toronto." Uh, I'm sure was it Hockey Night in Canada too? Probably. It might yeah, have been. I think so. Yeah, that on Saturday. It's just like, "Okay, here comes this fight." Like s- center ice, everybody dropped the gloves. We'll hit the ding ding ding, play the Mike Tyson music and it's just like I don't know. Like we just we just there's, know there's, too much. I know there's a section of hockey fandom and and players too that eat that shit up, but I, yes, we we know too much about about the brain and about how it, uh, blunt force trauma and repeated hits to the head affect the brain. The kid's 21. Like look at his face. Like this. Like someone needs to save him from himself. You don't need to fight read, every night yes, you step well, on the ice. Read about Derek Bugard. Read Bob Probert's book. The mental, toll, even without the brain injuries and the CTE and that stuff, the mental toll that it takes on these guys, depression, drug dependence, like yeah, all it, the things it, they need to do to get amped up. Think about that. Think about if you've ever been in a fight. What, one fight you get in a street fight or a bar fight or whatever like you and your buddies like whatever it might be right that shit like it messes with you for a long time well look what reeves said after after the fight he, yeah, ryan reeves sleep. long time nhl fighter he he said after the fight with remby he was like i couldn't sleep till six in the morning because he was thinking about the 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 fight and how it you he was so jacked up from it yeah. that's not healthy no it's not here's good. the thing when R- matt remby's career ends <laughs> at the age of 23 Due to, to, due to too many concussions, he is going to sue the ever living shit out of the New York, New York Rangers, and probably win. I don't, hey, yeah. PHNX is here. Hi yeah, guys. I mean, there's, yeah, there's just too much. Um, we've seen this story before. Yep. And I just, I, yeah, I, I, I want him, I want him to do what he can to have his NHL career, but I also don't want him to be gone at 24. Gone, gone. Right. Like, so I don't know. It's, yeah. And, I just, and, and I, I Chris would, brings I, up a point that he has an NHL career because he fights. That's true. 
Yeah, it's, yeah and I'm, he's, I, I he's think got some talent though. He's he's a big dude that skates. He's he's scored goals in the in the AHL level. It's not all he's done. I mean, he scored the game winning goal in the outdoor game. Like he's got mm-hmm. points. He but the problem is that's not what they want him to do now anymore. Right? right? They're ignoring he's be, all he's that. He's become the he's become the sideshow. Yeah, and you know I don't think you know the Rangers. I don't. He's not. I don't think he's a long term plan there so then no. what happens when he goes back to the AHL and he tries to get back in the league that's all he's going to try he's got, it's going to get worse he's got to beat everybody up to get back to the NHL right and that's that's I just, just yeah really I just encourage everybody to either read Bob Probert's book or watch the documentary on Amazon and it really just paints a picture of the life of an enforcer and you talk about people that could play Bob Probert didn't need to fight he was just really damn good at it and it was part of his life when he was on the on the ice and off. Because mm-hmm. anytime he'd walk into an Applebee's, some dickhead would want to throw down with Bob Probert, right? Like, it's just, I don't know. We know so much, and look, I, I'm guilty of it. Did I watch the Reeves and Rempe fight? Yes, of course I did. It entertains me. It entertains me, and I I, I am very conflicted about it. But I'm not going to pretend like I I don't enjoy fights when they happen. But we just know so much about the effects psychologically, physically, everything. That the whole Matt Rumby thing is just hard to watch. A good hockey fight is a good hockey fight. Like that's like we're all cavemen at our core at some in way, some way, shape, or form. But watching that fight, it was just I knew it was coming, and it was just you cringe at every punch. I don't I don't mind the uh, I don't mind the the fight in the heat of the moment of the game. You know what we saw like when Nick Felino broke his hand, he mm-hmm. got in the fight because okay. Our hey, guy got hurt. Yeah. You I hit our guy. Or he's in, gone. in the hit in yeah. the heat of the moment, you know, guy gets hit up high and you 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 drop the gloves, you start fighting like Domi did with Kane uh mm-hmm. last year. Those are fine. But it's the you know, two knuckle dragging punch monkeys at in in uh pregame skate warm ups sit there hey, hey hey we're gonna go hey first time on the yeah. ice you and me go no that's garbage Th- yeah. that does nothing for me i know like fighting when you know th- that serves a purpose fine but just to sit there and go we're gonna fight just because we can mm-hmm. I-, I don't have time for well, that and Bijan says you have to admit the probert domi battles were iconic Different, and they were yeah but, but at the time we didn't know the effects of that we didn't know what fighting and did a lot to of guys. those fights were heat of the moment games, the rivalry. I'm sure a lot of like as it went on, it was like, well, we're here, we have to fight each other. But and again, what those Probert guys literally through, hated each other though. That ended Bob Probert's life. His dependency on drugs and things to get through the life of being an enforcer. He needed cocaine. He needed painkillers. He needed all this stuff to get through his life in his mind anyway, and it's what killed him. And it's what made his wife a widow and his children fatherless. Yes, it was entertaining as hell, but we know too much. Yeah. And again, like you said, Mario, a hockey fight in the spur of the moment, Nick Felino drops the gloves a couple times a year, cool. But when it becomes, we're going to skate out to center ice and everyone knows this is going to happen and it's a sideshow, those days have to be over. And they were for a long time. And for whatever reason, Matt Rempe has kind of reignited this whole thing. And I hope that it's. I hope for the good of him, and the good of the game that it ramps down a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. we'll see. You don't have to do it every night. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. All right, we're gonna wrap things up. We are back Friday at one thirty for our trade deadline show. Not a ton of action for the Hawks, but it could be an exciting trade deadline. So make sure you join us, and you never know when a surprise or two will pop up. So we'll be here Friday at one thirty. We're off. Tomorrow, we're off Thursday. Of course, if anything happens between now and then, we can pop on. If it's big enough news for an emergency pod or we could just do some social media stuff, Discord stuff, whatever. So uh, we'll be around. The emergency pod will not be necessary. I don't I think so. I certainly hope not. I don't think so. Because <laughs> I don't want to open up my laptop the next two days. That sounds good. to. <laughs> right. All right. We'll talk to everybody on Friday at 1.30. Thanks for being with us. Smash that like button on the way out. And do us a favor. Go over to the What Chaos podcast page. Hit subscribe. Do them a favor so you get 24 hours of trade deadline coverage. After you subscribe to us. Right. Of course. And thank you for all the birthday wishes today, guys. I appreciate it. Yes. Lots and of lots of love and Discord and Twitter and Facebook and here in the chat. Uh, ah, your so birthday's thanks. over. Uh, it's over. Uh, no longer Greg's right. birthday. Get these balloons pop out here. Pop those balloons pop, pop, immediately. Pop, pop, pop.
<laughs> we'll talk to everybody Friday. <laughs> no more Blackhawks wins for you guys. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you Friday on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. <laughs> City like the mayor.